Namaste. Today we are going to discuss the essentials of mind management. Are we thinking or is thinking happening? Please check and see. Usually our answer would be thinking is happening. We are not thinking. Thinking is just going on. As long as this is the state of affairs, we must understand that we are part of our compulsive mode of thinking. We are already programmed to think in a particular way. And this uncontrolled thought process can take us anywhere. It can take us into stress. It can take us into depression, into insomnia, even neurosis. That is why it is essential to know the main things about mind management. What are the steps to mind management? What are the essentials of mind management? So that we can bring our thought process and finally our life into our hands. This is regarding what we are going to discuss today. Now, let me introduce to you the organized mind. What is the nature of a well-organized mind? It has a very orderly thought process. How does it have a very orderly thought process? Because such a mind is deeply conscious from within. Because it is deeply conscious, it is deliberate, it is willful, and it has a direct controllable thought process, which it, is, it guides. But an unorganized mind doesn't have that much of awareness. As a result, thoughts are just going on. The thoughts are erratic, disorderly, unorganized, and going on and on. So these are some of the general problems with an unorganized thought process. You may be overthinking, you may be doing circular thinking, which is called worrying, so this takes away a lot of our energies and leaves us depleted in a sense. And all this because the mind is not conscious enough. Awareness is minimal in the unorganized mind and thought is just overflowing. So these are the two types of thought processes we are capable of. The organized mind and the disorganized mind. Organized mind, more awareness and ordered thought process. Unorganized mind, less awareness, a disordered thought process. An organized mind doesn't need entertainment. It inclines towards learning cognitive experiences because it is very stable in itself. A very stable mind will give you joy in itself. But an unorganized mind needs constant distraction and entertainment because it is so unstable in itself. And this instability causes it to dive into some form of distraction constantly Otherwise, it tends to get depressed. So, th these are the differences between the organized and inorganized mind. A third difference which is pretty obvious is the organized mind will take you to your goals. But the unorganized mind is not going to take us to our goals. So, it is so very important to generate and maintain the organized mind. And this is what the essentials of mind management are about. Let me introduce you to the steps of mind management. The first step, when you notice a disorderly mind, an erratic thought process, the first thing that you need to do is take charge of your breathing, your breath, because a very calm, orderly breathing pattern ensures calm of mind. Check this out and see. If you are breathing deeply, the mind will naturally remain calm. If you are not breathing, if you are breathing very fast or maybe very slow, then your thought patterns also change. Your mind changes its states. So it is important to learn to breathe correctly first because the common ground, the common source of both your breathing and mind activity is the same vital energy within you, which is called prana. This pranic energy manifests as breath and thought. So, to stabilize prana and to regulate breathing pattern is one of the very first steps to having a orderly, uh, a straight thought process which you can rely upon. Deep calmness of mind which you can rely upon in any situation in life. This is the first step to mind management. The second step is take care of your movements, your speech your facial expression, 
these are all behavioral patterns which to a certain extent you can modulate, you can take care of them. If you are too hurried in your movements, your mind also will be all the more confused. It is already disorderly, it will get all the more confused. So these behavioral patterns can be changed, made more calm, can be ordered just by an act of will. But remember these two things are to do with your behavior. Behavior is not character. Behavior is the external crust of your personality as it were. And it can be refined. But the essential thing is coming to character level change. Changing the very nature of your thoughts. That is the essential thing. So the third step of mind management becomes start watching your thoughts. Don't just run along with them. Let them not take you where they want to go. Watch them closely. As you keep watching them, they will slow down and stop. They will pause. This is the nature of the mind. When self-awareness dawns in the human being, he becomes capable of watching his thoughts and handling his thought process objectively. So from time to time, just pause and watch your thoughts. They will slow down and gradually stop. The fourth step and the most important step I would say to mind management is what is called cognitive reframing or actually restructuring your thought process. This is so very important. This is the actual heart of mind management. It literally means reframing your thought patterns, replacing your negative thoughts with positive thoughts, your negative emotions with positive emotions. In the Patanjali Yoga Sutras, which is a wonderful manual on mind management and something much beyond the mind, going to the very source of the mind. In this book, you have a complete knowledge is being given of how to handle mind in different situations. So we have this four-four discipline prescribed by Patanjali. It is called Maitri, Karuna, Mudita and Bupeksha. Maitri means a general friendliness towards all beings. A kindness, a compassionate attitude towards all beings. Maitri Karuna means if you see somebody suffering, you should be all the more compassionate, all the more kind. So you are always keeping positive states of mind by doing this. The third one is Mudita. When you see people joyful around you, you are also happy. You are very happy, happier than them. Again, you are retaining your, the positive state of your mind. And when you see wickedness around you, irritation around you, you will not get irritated, but you will practice upeksha, indifference, a certain distance from that kind of a thought process. So all of these disciplines ensure that you retain a positive state of mind, no matter what your surroundings are. So you can replace thought. See, this is the most important thing to understand. You can replace one thought with another thought. In fact, you cannot stop thoughts easily without training. For a very short time, for a few fractions of a second, you can stop thinking. But generally, without deep practice of meditation, you cannot readily stop the thought process. But you can easily replace thoughts. And you have to pause, think and replace. And to help you do this, we have what are called cultural values, Sanskriti, which means there are certain noble sentiments which deliberately have to be cultured in the human heart so that our thoughts are positive. Our thoughts do not go into any form of negativity so that our bhavas, our emotions and sentiments and attitudes remain positive at all cost. Examples of this are kindness. Kindness in your heart will ensure positivity of mind under all circumstances. Please check and see if this is true or not. The second thing is, a feeling of gratefulness and thankfulness towards all beings. When a plate of food comes in front of us, it is trying to be thankful, thankful to all the people who have worked to make this possible. At least 15 people have worked to bring that plate of food in front of you. Are you thankful or do you take it for granted? So being grateful, being grateful for all the bounties of your life, this is an essential part of maintaining the right bhav, the right attitude, the right sentiment in your mind at all times. So this is another 
cultural value which is very important. Then the third value I would say is to appreciate the efforts of others. This way naturally remove any kind of bitterness, cynicism from your mind. Be thankful that there are there's so much good around you. Be appreciating of the efforts of others. Be kind in your words and deeds. So all these little things ensure positivity of mind. See, this is part and parcel of cultural values of every nation, every tradition, that essentially it is unfolding the goodness of life, being appreciative of the essential goodness of life. So this ensures positive thoughts in your mind. And that is why this is the way to be. This is cognitive reframing. You are deliberately replacing any form of negativity with positivity which is always there. Look at it and appreciate it. That is all. The next important step which we should understand about mind management is our very brain is structured by the thoughts in our mind. The neural pathways, the neural connections in our brain. How are they made? Through the thoughts in your mind. That is why it is so important to make sure our thoughts are well guided, well ordered, positive. Even today's modern neuropsychology will tell you this, that what are the factors that determine the neural pathways in your brain? First is your cognitive experiences, which means what you are learning, your exposures. Second is the repetition in your mind. And third is your conscious attention spans. So of if all this is taken care of consciously you are thinking correctly, then you can be ensured that the neural pathways are positive. The grooves that you cut for your thought pattern through your thought patterns are good and your energy flows in the right direction. That way you will not be depleted of energy but will be energized by merely thinking. So it is important to understand this. Many students ask this question. What about all the negative impressions which we already have? We already have over a period of time collected a whole lot of negative impressions. What do we do about that? That cannot be restructured so easily because we have a memory baggage which can be very negative. Now the simple solution which we give for this is we give the example of an ink bottle. Suppose you have a bottle of ink which you want to clean up. What do you do? First, you will pour out the ink and then you start pouring in fresh water. So initially only dark, dark colored water is going to come out. Gradually it will get lighter and lighter. Finally, once the, uh, at some point of time, very fresh water will come out of the ink bottle. Your mind is something like this. When you see dark, full of negativity, very bad kind of impressions, then first of all, you pour out, in, which means Stop the inflow of anything negative and remove. Don't consciously think about the negativity in your mind. Try to pour out the negativity outside. And no more will you take any dark ink into the ink bottle. And then you start pouring in fresh water, which means positive ideas, positive emotions, exposures to good, noble, elevating things. They will ensure that fresh water enters your system good thoughts into your system because ultimately you see what is going on in your mind is to a great extent determined by your sense intake. So if that is well guided, that is a conscious process, then definitely you will be able to order your thoughts. You will be able to make sure your thoughts are very deliberate. They are going in a particular direction. And then as you go on pouring in fresh water, initially a little dark Colored water can come out because of the past impressions, but at one certain point of time, very good fresh water only will come out. So you can be sure that once the mind is purified, cleaned, only good thoughts will come out. So this is the way to convert our memories, to change our memories. Please always remember this connection, which I have given many times. Your th conscious thoughts are to a great extent determined by your sense intake. What you take in through the eyes, what you take in through the ears, make sure they are good. So then your thoughts are good, orderly, and these thoughts, when you repeat them, 
they go into your subconscious and become your impressions and scars. And then they will also be good if the conscious thoughts are good. After some time, these some scars fructify as memories back in your conscious mind. So if you want to change your memories, you must see that the gateway of the conscious mind is kept good and positive, pure, so that only the good is retained within you. So this is the simple way to change our memories, change our conscious thought processes and our impressions. So this great connection is again given to us by Patanjali Yoga Sutras. The next point which I would like to go into is how do we become conscious from within? This is the heart of mind management. You cannot have complete mind man management without the power of meditation. So how do we actually become deeply conscious from within? This is what meditation is about. Yoga is about becoming conscious to the depths of your being. It is not about finding an awareness there, finding an Atman there. It is already there. You don't become conscious of consciousness. You just become fully conscious through the yogic process. So this is called meditation. The process to do this, it is literally churning the mind to extract awareness, which is the substratum or the source of your mind. Just like how you churn creamy milk or curd in order to extract butter, which is inherent in it, but not in that form. So you have to churn the milk or curd in order to extract butter. So also you have to churn the mind to extract consciousness, pure consciousness or awareness. Once it comes to the forefront, you can perfectly order your thought process. You will know what to empower in your mind. And so you just go ahead and get into your goals. A structured and organized mind requires a high degree of awareness. Now, how do we do this? For this, let me go into a allegory, a beautiful story. In the, It comes in our Puranas, in the scriptures. It is the story of Samadra Manthan, the churning of the mind to extract the bottle of awareness. The story of Samadra Manthan goes like this. There are these periodic quarrels between the gods and the demons. And it so happened during one such quarrel, the gods like Indra, Varuna, these uh, deities, they were uh, vanquished from the heavens by the Asuras. Now they went to the Supreme Godhead Vishnu and told him about their problems. They said that what do we do during these uh, periodic quarrels between uh, the Asuras and us? Uh, there are times when we are just uh, vanquished from our kingdom and then we just have to roam about the earth. What do we do? What is the solution to this? And then Lord Vishnu said, See, why don't you empower yourselves by the nectar of immortality so that even if you have a fight, a war with someone, there is no chance of death. Once you become immortal, then there is nobody who can kill you. So that way, you will be able to always win and you won't have to worry about your numbers decreasing. So try to obtain the nectar of immortality. Now the gods started thinking, oh, this is a great idea. And somehow the news spread even to the asuras, the, the demons. And they also came forward and said, well, let's try to get this nectar of immortality. And both sides joined hands. They decided that together they would work to get the nectar of immortality, what is called Angbrit in Sanskrit, which will make them immortal. And then they would work together for it and then they would share whatever they got. So once they decided upon this, then they asked for the means to get this. So the means to get the nectar of immortality was to churn the ocean. Now this is a story which is actually telling us the need to churn the mind to obtain self-knowledge. Immortality is not about making the body death proof. It is about attaining to our true being, the true nature of our consciousness, so which is always immortal, which is always eternal. But in the story, it is depicted as getting an umbreth, getting an object outside of oneself by churning the ocean. Now, we are going to correlate this story with the what it is actually symbolic of, what it is trying to signify for us. 
So by churning the ocean of the mind, you can obtain the nectar of immortality. You can get self-knowledge. This is what the story is actually telling us. So now both the parties were very excited and they made a pact, both the Devas and the Asuras, that they would work together. It means to say, all the forces of the mind have to join hands for meditation to take place. For the churning of the mind to take place. You don't meditate with a bit of your mind. The entire mind must feel the need for it and must dive into it. So this is the meaning of the positive and negative forces joining hands. Because the Devas indicate, you can say they are positive thoughts. The Asuras indicate your negative thoughts. The, the power of both has has to come together. And with that powerful mind, you have to attempt meditation. Now, to churn the ocean, they require a churning rod. So Lord Vishnu said, the Mandara mountain may be your churning rod. Now, what does the Mandara mountain symbolize? It symbolizes the spine, which is actually the axis of your personality. It is the central point. And most importantly, in the yogic culture, we say, you can concentrate pranayic energy along the spine. Just sit erect and you will see what they, they are trying to be. In a deeper way they are saying it. But if you just sit erect, you can know that you suddenly become alert if you keep your spine straight. So, the spine is the axis of the universe, as it were. And that is why the Mangara mountain is supposed to be the churning rod for churning the ocean. And then, with what would be the churning rope? So they decided that uh, Lord Vishnu told them Vasuki, the divine serpent, uh, he will be the churning rope. Now Vasu Vasuki actually signifies the Kundalini Shakti in us, which means the entire mass of Kranaic energy, vital energy, which is to be systematically raised and committed to higher centers so that Higher awareness unfolds. This is essentially a part of the yogic meditation technique. So the Vasuki snake who would serve as the churning rope is nothing but your vital energy. How you handle it? Then the churning begins. They bring all these things together and the churning begins and the devas are tugging on one side and the asuras are tugging on the other side and a whole lot of very marvelous things come out of the ocean. Due to the churning, there are precious stones, gems, pearls, all these. The ocean eaves all these as it were. They come to the surface. So even as we churn our minds, you will see a number of precious things coming out. Your beautiful emotions, revelations, the deep devotion within you. All of this will come to the surface. And you will feel so happy about it. Deep calmness of mind will come. Your inner strength will come out. So all these things came to the surface. But at some point even halahal, a great poison, that spread across the surface of the ocean. Now even from our minds, the halahal, the poison of bitterness, resentment, anger, all this can come out at any part in your meditation. Then how was the halahal taken care of? The story goes that Lord Shiva came and consumed the halahal poison. Now the Lord Shiva in us is the self. Self-knowledge will remove all negativity. Any negativity coming out of your mind can be consumed by deep inner knowledge, knowledge of your own true being. And so the churning continues. Then Mother Lakshmi comes out. Mother Lakshmi symbolizes wealth, prosperity. The entire wealth of your mind will come out as you continue to practice your meditation. What is the wealth of your mind? Your great creativity, your beautiful emotions, sentiments, your paths, your uh, will, your talents, the beautiful thoughts inherent in your mind, your energies, all of them will blossom up. So, this is how everything that is the content inherent in your mind already will slowly come up to the surface as you continue churning the mind. The entire wealth of your mind will be yours. And then finally, the nectar of him immortality comes out. It is in a huge jar 
according to the story which was held by Dhanvantari, and as soon as he brings the nectar of immortality, there's a rush between the Devas and the Asuras to get the nectar first. Then, born Vishnu, who symbolizes the buddhi, the higher discriminating intellect in us, the pure intellect, he makes sure that only the Devas, only the gods, receive the nectar. He takes the form of an enchanting woman and draws the nectar away from the Asuras and makes sure only the Devas receive it. So also, when self-knowledge is got, when you reach the point where you, are, you become fully aware, you will know whom to empower, what to empower in your personality. Only the positivity of your mind you will empower. But deep inner awareness is required for that. That has to be awakened first for this empowerment to take place. This is the meaning of nourishing the gods with nectar. And who's capable of it? The buddhi. In the story, Lord Vishnu, your, your own higher intelligence is capable of doing this. So that is to be awakened. Once higher awareness awakens within us, the buddhi takes charge of your personality and it will empower only the good within you. So this is the way to bring our thoughts entirely into order. This is the way to completely manage the mind. Ultimately, you will see that you yourself are able to awaken the highest within you. If you dive deep into the mind, through the power of meditation, this is possible. Thus, you unfold pure awareness within you and get complete charge of your mind. Meditation, the essential part of yoga, actually helps you raise the power of awareness, which means unfold awareness and raise the power of happiness. So, essentially, you must arrive at the point of meditation, the state of meditation to take complete charge of your mind. So, let us just recapitulate the essentials of mind management. First, breath control. Second, control of movement, control of facial expression, control of speech. Third, watch your thoughts. Fourth, cognitive reframing. Learn the art of replacing positive emotion, positive thought, replacing negativities with positivity. Learning that art is cognitive reframing. Fifth, understanding what exactly creates, creates your neural pathways, your thought process and how to handle it. Through conditioning yourself in great cultural values, in great positive sentiments. And sixth, the final point is getting the meditative state on a regular basis. If this is brought about, we have covered, you can know that your mind is in your hands. So this constitutes the essentials of mind management.